All right, everybody. So today what we're going to go over is how to cut out windows for openings, as well as put in some basic windows to our uh, shipping containers right here. Um, as you can see, what I've got here, sorry, I'm having some issues with my mouse, uh, is I've got a shipping container that's just um, what we call exploded. So the right-hand wall here, I just pushed off, left-hand wall, I pushed off push the doors off and left the uh, roof where it is. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to put one relatively large window right here and then another window over here that's a little bit longer and narrower. So the first step is to orbit over and my mouse does not seem to want to be working so I'll flip over here. And what we need to do is we need to create a wall that's the same size as this outer wall. Um, if you remember from the videos that we saw on Justin's channel he made his walls um, two inches thick, or at least he made the window so it's two inches thick. That's what we're going to use for this project right here. Um, I would hope my mouse is working. Ah. Um, that's what we're going to use for, for this project right here. We don't really need to worry about framing the walls. So framing is when you put two by fours or whatever it is you're using to frame and you place them in the wall in order to hold up the roof. The structural integrity of our box is fine, so we don't need to worry about framing for this project, but we do need to worry about insulation because as the sun hits the outside of that metal box, it's gonna heat it up uh, when the sun's out, and it's also gonna let heat escape from the inside when it's cold outside. So what that does, if you didn't insulate the shipping container, it, was a, it would essentially turn it into an oven during the um, summer months, and a bit of a freezer during the winter months. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an interior wall that's two inches thick. It's the same dimensions as our outer wall right here. Uh, we know from our previous work that this is 40 long, and I believe it's nine foot six wide, but let's go ahead and measure that just to make sure that my memory is correct. So if we look down here in the bottom right, we can tell that that is indeed 40 feet long and 9.6 tall. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make a wall that has those dimensions. So going in the, I believe it's red direction, or green direction, excuse me, 40 apostrophe for feet, 9 foot 6 tall. And notice the way that I wrote that, 9 apostrophe 6 parentheses. It's important that there's no space, otherwise that's not going to work. So I could go ahead and I could create um, the rectangle with my line tool, or I could just go over here to my rectangle tool and create that surface right there. Before we push pull it out two inches, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my openings for my windows. So I'm just eyeballing my dimensions right here. Obviously, if this was my real project, I'd want to put a lot more time into exactly how big those windows are going to be. And I'd also want to make sure that I have them placed on the wall at a good level because you wouldn't want a window that's too high or too low because then people wouldn't be able to look out them, at least not comfortably. But for the sake of today, I'm just eyeballing this. So I've made my two openings. I'm going to take the interior part of where that opening is going to be, delete it, rotate around, and then I'll push pull that out two inches to account for the insulation in the walls. Two inches, enter. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that together. Make group. And then I'm going to move it from that corner right there to that corner right there. Make sure that when you're moving something that you've made, that you're picking where to move it from, because that's really important. Otherwise, you can't snap it anywhere that will help you out. OK. So now we have our, <coughs> excuse me, our openings. So if you remember from the previous video, I believe it was video 10, what we need to do is we need to create this line that we can copy and paste along all these bars so we can celebrate the se separate, not celebrate, separate the top piece from the middle from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and create that surface right now so we can draw along the intersection. I'm going in the red direction and it doesn't matter what shape you make, all you want to do is make sure that it's closed off and we can now create lines along the intersection of both of those faces. 
So at this point, this has served its purpose, and it's not really helping us anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those extra lines. Okay. So now we have the lines that we need to copy and paste along the top and along the bottom of all these bars. So in order to select each one of these pieces individually, or select them all together, what I want to do is I want to hold down the shift button, which is at the bottom and the bottom, uh, excuse me, the bottom left and the bottom right of your keyboard. So I'm going to hold down, and I'm not sure if you can tell in the recording, but to the right of the cursor, there's a plus and minus button. So that's saying, okay, do you want to add pieces? Do you want to take them away? And as soon as they're all blue, we know we have selected what we want to select. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Control plus C to copy, Control plus B to paste, and then I can paste that where it needs to go, all the way across the top and across the bottom. So we're done on the, nope, we're not done on the top, we got one more. That's really close, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. So let's see how we're doing over here. So I'll start right here. That might be an issue. But we'll see if we can fix that later. If I had actual dimensions for my windows, I could place them more strategically so we don't have issues like this where it's halfway between a bar. But that's okay. For what we're doing right now, it doesn't matter too much. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste along the bottom as well. Ooh, lucky I noticed that. I noticed that I posted or pasted it at the wrong spot. So I'm going to Control Z to go back one step. I could also hit the back arrow and then Control V to paste. And one final one over here. Okay. So now we've isolated the top bar, middle bar, and bottom bar. Now what I need to do is I need to select this and explode it. Because I won't be able to select any individual piece as long as it's reading as one group. So I'm going to explode the group. And now I can select individual pieces and get rid of them. gave us some issues. Let's see if we can figure them out. Um, one thing to note here, if I'm selecting from left to right, this should be a repeat for you. It's only going to select the things that are entirely inside that rectangle, so it selects nothing. But if I go from right to left, it's going to select everything that's touching that rectangle, which is helpful right there. All right, work on that side. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, great. Next, I've got to cap the, the bottom and the top. And the way I do that is I just draw one line. And of course, it's not working. Well, I had to draw a couple lines. Normally, you just draw one. Sometimes ketchup has a mind of its own. Okay, so normally when you go from here to here, it creates that surface. For whatever reason, it's not working for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that. There's always a way to work around an issue in SketchUp. Because oftentimes things don't go right the first way. All right, so i got to do the same thing to these pieces right here. Not sure what that pasted, so I'm gonna go back. Control D, Control D, Control D. I've got an extra line there that I drew for that initial shape, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Okay, <clears throat> so successfully made that opening. Let's go over here 
and get rid of this one as well. Careful when you're selecting um, lots of pieces, because if I select things that are in the background, you can see that I selected that back there, and I didn't mean to, so you don't want to delete things unnecessarily. All right, so now the problem area over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out from right there to right there. Then I'll do the same thing at the top. Then I'll create a line from top to bottom. See if we can close it up. Hopefully at this point in the semester you guys should understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to create a shape so we can then delete it. Delete. Delete. All right. Almost there. Okay, so I closed the shape there. I closed the shape there. And I closed the shape there. That's what I was trying to show you originally up here. Let's see if it works now. No, it's still not working. I'm not sure why that is doing what it's doing, but that's okay. Copy paste. Copy paste. Let's see if I can switch to a better angle. I apologize, this is a little bit of a long video, but we're going over a lot of stuff. I'll finish up the tops now. Whoa. Now we have <clears throat> our openings cut, as well as our bars capped. So now it's a matter of making the actual windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the interior side, and I'm going to select, ooh, I can't select all those. I was going to select every single wall right here, but the reason I can't do that is because this is grouped. So I've got to explode it first, and then I'm going to select this one, hold down shift, that one, that one, and that one. I'll go over here and I'll do the same. So holding down shift and selecting the edges. Great. Copy paste. So now we've got our two openings over here. I'm going to close those openings up to create a surface. I'll do the same thing over here. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> so now what we need to do is we need to create the window sill, so the boundary of the glass and also the window itself. For that, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do my offset tool. Offset just means, if you remember when we looked at railway lines, so the offset distance is just how far away this line is from that line right there. So that's what that means. So right now it's saying, okay, is this the edge that you want to offset? I'm going to tell it yes. And now it's saying, okay, how big do you want to offset it? And I'm going to tell it, okay, I just want you to offset that one inch. So you can see we have this one inch boundary around here. And I'll do the same thing over here. Tell it one inch by typing that in. Great. Now we have the beginnings of something that's starting to look like a window. So then I'll switch back from offset to push pull. And we know that our window sill is going to be two inches deep. So I type in two apostrophe. And I'll do the same thing over here. Two, I mean parentheses instead of apostrophe before. Okay, but now what we need to do is we need to take this, turn it into glass, and then put it in the middle. middle. So I'm going to double click that, copy and paste. 
and I can go back and I can select the original, delete it. I'll do the same thing over here. Double click, copy paste, delete my original. And now I'm going to go into materials. So if I select this right here and I go into my material settings, which is this one right over here, the cube with the almost dice like face. And then I'm going to go over here to the search, glass and mirrors. This is regular glass. And if I paint that, and if I paint that, now when I rotate down, you can see that it is somewhat translucent. So you might be thinking, oh, it's going to be tedious to go in and color every single one of these faces right here. And you would be absolutely right. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make them a group. And then I'm going to go into metal. And then when I select any part of this, it's going to paint every single one of those um, faces in that group. Okay, so from here, it's just a matter of moving that from that spot right there to the midpoint. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Move that. To the midpoint. And get rid of my materials because I don't need them anymore. From there, it's just a matter of moving it over to the right spot. I'm going to click that corner right there because I know that I have that corner right there to set it into. So that's all there is to it.